How's it going guys? Andy here back in the potting shed and today I want to have a go at rescuing this anthurium. Now this is a great little house plant actually. I've had this for a very long time, probably four or five years at a guess and it's done very well. It puts out so so many blooms. These little modified uh, leaf uh, petals uh, of, uh, of the plant here uh, look absolutely beautiful like iridescent china absolutely beautiful and in this video I want to give you a bit of a, uh, a care guide uh, some information about this plant and we're going to try and rescue this one it's um, as I say quite old now it has been neglected a little bit I have to be honest with you uh, it's grown a little bit leggy it probably hasn't had the best light I put it out of the way um, uh, probably about a year ago and it's caught direct sun and as you can see it's really scorched some of the leaves but the great thing about these anthuriums is they're really hardy and um, with a little bit of uh, love and TLC you can get these plants really doing very well indeed so in this video if you've got a struggling uh, anthurium hopefully I'll be able to show you what you can do to bring it back to life and uh, what sort of care it needs. So let's get over to the potting bench behind me and we'll get started. Alrighty, so here we have the Anthurium. Now a little bit about this plant, it comes from the tropical rainforest and you would normally find this actually attaching itself to trees up in the canopy and getting its uh, moisture and nutrients from the environment around it so it's used to a, a humid location it is actually an epiphyte so it grows on other plants it isn't a parasite it doesn't get its nutrients from the tree that it's growing on it just uses it to grow like you would uh, an orchid would grow on a tree in its natural environment in the tropical rainforest for example so that's what these anthuriums do and these beautiful little porcelain like flowers they really do look like a piece of iridescent china they're absolutely beautiful they are actually modified leaves uh, that is not the flower although obviously we would um, consider them flowers these are actually called brats and uh, they're modified leaves and the flowers are tiny little things on this stem here so it's an interesting plant and they're relatively easy to look after they're quite tolerant uh, they don't like direct sunlight, uh, which gets you these browning of the leaves, but otherwise they will uh, tolerate drying out um, reasonably well. In fact, they probably prefer it. They don't like to be too soggy for too long. Um, and uh, yeah, so they're, they're an easy plant to grow and they will push out these flowers in abundance all year round. They'll just keep churning them out if they're happy. You don't have to give it loads of um, food, just occasional uh, bit of dilute, um, fertilizer like from the tomato feed something like that is all you need to do and uh, it will reward you with plenty of flowers all the time bit of bright light in indirect sun is all it needs for part of the day and it will be perfectly happy now this one as I say I've ignored a little bit too much I've had it for many years and as you get new plants you get excited about other things and this gets pushed to one side and yes uh, a lot of the leaves the older leaves are getting a bit shriveled up and dry so what I'm actually going to do for this one um, uh, you can divide these plants uh, and it's got a bit long and leggy and woody so what I'm going to do just to tidy it up a little bit is to divide it up into smaller plants cut off some of these older leaves and just tidy it up and what you'll find is when we give it the ideal scenario a little bit of humidity the right sort of bright indirect light then it will push out a load of new uh, leaves and some more new fresh flowers and it will give it a whole new lease of life very quickly so let's get on with that now shall we so I've just got a couple of replacement pots they don't have to stay in these pots but it's just what I've got right now uh, they're a reasonable size and as they grow up and they recover I might put them in a nicer looking pot as and when I want to put them out in the house or in the living space so I filled up some uh, plant pots here now ready to uh, uh, move these plants over so we'll get started I'm just going to pull this out it's come out relatively easily which is good you see plenty of decent um, 
growth on the roots. Now I did give this a good water about an hour ago just so the plant can really absorb a lot of moisture because we're going to be messing around with the roots for a little while and it may take a little while to take on some moisture in its new pot. So it's a good idea just to give it a bit of a, a bit of a water maybe an hour or so before you're going to do it so it gets to drain out and it's not all messy but the plant will have enough uh, water in it, uh, retaining in it, to give it a good start in its new pot. You might be able to see in this woody part of the plant, there is individual pieces that you can break off that will form, that will be able to form different plants. So it will come apart just by gently teasing them apart. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to tease these separate sections off of the main plant and just make sure you can pull some roots off as you do that. So each plant has some roots. There we go. That's the first one. And it's, in fact, that's come away as two separate plants and they've both got some roots on them as well. And I keep teasing them away like that, just carefully breaking them off. They will come away, but obviously you want to preserve as many roots with them as you can. So just tease them away because you don't really want to be ripping it if you can help it, but just teasing the roots out from the root ball and that will preserve as many roots as you can. There we go. That's another one with a big healthy amount of roots. There's actually two there, you could split that again if we want to make several. And they both have plenty of roots. There we go. We can get quite a lot of plants out of this one. That one's come away. And it's got one root on it, two roots on it, so it should be fine. And there we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven healthy little plants all from this one big ball. Now, obviously you don't have to divide them. If you want to make a, a massive big plant, you can keep it all as one like that and just cut off the old leaves and, and let it keep growing into a massive plant if you like. But I like to um, divide these and you know, uh, for, for, for one plant, you can get several more to come for many, many years. And, and dividing these roots does stimulate the plant and it will push out new leaves and give it a new lease of life. So that's a good thing as well. Now there's quite a few smaller plants here. So I'm gonna use some of these bigger pots for the bigger parts. And then I'm gonna get some smaller pots for the smaller ones. You can use bigger pots, but it's just a waste of compost really. I'm just going to pop them in. I like to use the other pot to pour the compost over the top. There we go, just seat him nicely in the pot. A little bit more on this side. If you've got any old leaves here, you can just snip them off. I've got some little snippers that are perfect for getting in here and snipping off old dead leaves. Just to neaten it up a bit. And now this is in a, a nice new pot with some fresh compost. There'll be no need to feed this because the compost uh, will have its own nutrients in here. So you don't have to give it anything else. These plants do like free draining soil. So if you wanted to add a little bit of grit into here or some perlite, uh, that would um, also benefit it as well. 
These are only temporary pots, so I'm not going to do that right now. Probably going to reuse some of this compost because there's nothing really wrong with it. Just got some old roots in it, otherwise it's fine. Now you don't need to watch me do every single one of these, so I'll get these sorted and we'll see what they look like when they're done. that's it all done nine fresh new anthurium plants just from one old tired plant themselves so you've got a bunch more for your own living space and your friends and family as well as gifts so you can't go wrong with dividing up old plants like this giving them a new lease of life they'll very quickly push out new leaves and new flower bracts to uh, really bring in new uh, lease of life and so it's well worth doing this if you have an old plant that's looking a little bit tired, a little bit leggy. It doesn't take long and you've got a whole new bunch of plants as a result. Alrighty, that's it for me. I hope you found this useful. Please give me a thumbs up if you have. Subscribe if you're new around here and I'll catch you once again very soon for another video. Bye for now.